It's a lovely afternoon at a Miva dairy farm. At least today is not as cold as yesterday where we are observing their, their signage making process. That one means we'll have a good day with Dr. Carrier ex explaining to us how he manages his dairy farm. In addition to that, he'll give us some breeding tips that might help you to get to the next level. We will have a walk through, through the farm. He'll explain how he has grouped the cows and even one or two extra input he might have regarding the farm organization and structure. Dr. Karibu Sana. Thank you very much. Boy. I like your lovely calves. <laughs> thank maybe you, you can you. tell us something about them. Yeah. And maybe one or two things are the normal uh, routine that you normally do in this section. Yes, this is our calf pen. Uh, you can see, as you can see, it's all in the full. These are like uh, the, the carvings that came through the last two months. Uh, the oldest one year is one and a half months. And what we normally do, immediately a calf is born, the first thing is to weigh. You weigh the calf, you get the weight, and then you continue weighing every month to see what is the weight gain. Then after that, you dry the calf. You bring her to the, to, the, to the shed. Of course, we start with this side. This is where we have the small babies before we move them to the other side. So these ones are like three weeks. Uh, one. This is uh, last week. No, this week. The two of them are for last week. This one is like uh, one month now. So when we bring them here, what we do, as you can see, we have uh, three, three feeding uh, uh, buckets, so to say. One of them who have parrots, the other one who have a hay mixed with a little bit of napier, very little indeed, and the other one is for clean water. So that immediately now within the, the, the immediately they start feeding, they're able to take enough for themselves without straining. They need to get water always. They need to get parrots always until they're able to take uh, like two kilos. Once they start taking two kilos, we start limiting them to only two kilos. But before then, we put very little every morning when we finish, we add some more. Yeah. Do you offer any minerals to these calves? Ah, sometimes, uh, yeah, we put a block there for them to, to, to chew and to, to lick. But uh, within a short time, when they are like, uh, when they are like uh, one month or so, that is when we start using uh, the super force. Thank you. Superforce Q Nation is a mineral brand that is supplied and distributed by dairy networks. It's a game changer in the dairy journey. So, Dr. after here, where do you, after how long do you remove these calves from this pen? Uh, these ones will stay here for like uh, three months. Once they are weaned, they are, they are off milk, then they will move to the next barn up here. Then from the next barn, they will move down. Then we keep on changing, shifting them based on age. Before we go to, to the other barn where you take them, there's something very interesting. Uh, sometime back we are having a conversation with you regarding the common challenges farmers face in their calf pen. And this is diarrhea. Yeah. Do you normally have challenge? Ndamazakta uh, is in a part of diarrhea. Sometimes uh, you can get one or two. But one of the major things that you use to manage diarrhea is hygiene. For sure, if you manage your hygiene, and diarrhea will be a thing of the past. We have never lost a calf through diarrhea. Yeah. So diarrhea, we are very careful. Hygiene, uh, we make sure they stay on a dry pen. And uh, immediately you see one diarrhea ring, you are very quick to act so that it doesn't go too far. So that one is not a challenge, Kwadaktai? It's not a challenge. Hygiene is the first language you understand from this farm? Completely, completely. Do you have a dedicated uh, staff who manages the calves, or it's just anyone? Uh, these calves, they are managed by the guy who does milking. So here we have uh, four staff. One of them is for general farm work. 
uh, then one is for milking, milking and the calves. Then the second one is just for feeding. The third one is for cleaning, and we are done. You are done. Yeah. So there is a dedicated employee here. Yeah, completely. Akuna ina story. Ah, he dairy and he who you. Abana. 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 Neneke pata akuna maji na juu anani kuriza. Akuna chakura. I know who it is. Who who I should ask. And sometimes also I, I normally look through the cameras to see what they are doing. So <laughs> you are there in Nairobi, you are able to see everything happening in the dairy farm. Yeah. At what point do you name uh, these cows? Because I've seen you are lactating cows, very nice name. At least I've seen my mother there, Wanjiro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Immediately a calf is born, we take a photo with all the marks, we note the unique marks, we give her a name, we record in the book, then when it's like a batch of these ones ten, now we print the tags and put them. Now, like this one, yeah. where is the unique mark? The unique, the, the unique mark for this one is the the pointing, the pointing black tip at the back, yeah, on the left side. That is a unique mark that is not in any other year. Oh, this this that one, there. that thing there, the, the one that looks like Madagascar. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> is it Madagascar or Zanzibar somewhere? Yeah, that, that one, part in the map of Africa yeah, somewhere. That there. one is a unique mark. The photo is taken, saved the content, it's recorded in the book. This one is, uh, we call her Chinese. So, even if you just say Chinese, they will just go to the book and see. Yeah, because have of you the registered the, these cows? Yes, the cows are registered, but uh, some of them are not yet. I think, uh, I want Njuma to come and finish the work, but uh, he has left it some time at, at some point. Yeah. Uh, there's something again you told me that interested me. Yeah. All these uh, calves you have here, they are pedigrees. They are pedigrees. They are pedigrees. In their fourth, they are the fourth they generation. Fourth in generation. This actually, farm. some of them fifth generation. We'll yeah. have a discussion about that one. Maybe yeah. we we'll see your next uh, stage. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> now, after getting out your calves from that section. You bring them here? Yes, they normally come here. But I can see here you have two groups. Yes. How have you grouped them? Um, basically here yeah, we have uh, two units. Eh? The youngest ones are supposed to be on that side. The slightly older ones are, straight, are supposed to be on this side. But as you can see, we have a limitation on space. You can see a very young calf like that one that is uh, three months old, existing with the six months old calves. It will be bullied. It will be bullied. Or she will not eat well. She will not grow very fast. So here the only thing we are making them look uh, the way they are is because of the challenge of space. But these are calves that are like uh, uh, six months old. Yeah. From here six months, eight months they go down. So here we have six months from four months to six months. But already you can see we are we are already getting some challenges because uh, when you see a small calf like that one staying with these big ones. Doctor, I have a big question. I have a question to you. Yeah. And this question is, how are you able to achieve like uh, these are eight calves that are in, in a span of about two months. Yeah. Now you have another one here. They are about one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. They are getting six. Yeah. What trick are you using to get this batch calving? Is this it by luck? Is it planning? No, basically, you see, in a farm, you must have your objectives right. Yeah? If you check, most of my calving comes from November and December and January. That is when I'm also a bit relaxed. So, if it means monitoring, in addition to my staff doing it, personally, that is the time I have got a bit of free time. So, I don't want also calves uh, getting scattered throughout the year because also management becomes quite difficult. Also you see the spaces we have. We have space for uh, one to three months, uh, four to six to seven months, then uh, seven to eighteen. Then you know now if you if you keep on having one every time then uh, you may end up having variation, variation among the groups and too much variation will not allow you to manage those cows well. So the feeding will be a challenge, the small ones will be bullied. Like if you go down there, you see some calves which were bullied, which are still uh, too small. Compared to their age mates, they ought to have been big cows, but they still look like calves. Now, is it a natural phenomena? Have you achieved it uh, naturally by skipping some heat or is it through synchronization? We don't synchronize these cows. 
the only thing we have done is like now all the carvings that came uh, November and December uh, we normally make sure that those cows are in calf within three months so it keeps on repeating itself actually here other than one cow all the other cows give us a calf per year it is only one the whole of last year she hasn't given us a calf and we are going to work on her but uh, the rest here the rest of uh, nini, the rest of the cows they give us a calf per year so if they start calving in uh, november december january and within 90 days they are in calf again they, they will still move as a group so we never synchronized but we found it coming as a group and we kept it at that point <laughs> now, uh, after this section, yeah. after they are seven, eight months, yeah. you take them to a different uh, calf pen. Yes, they go down to a different pen. Now that's where you go and do the insemination from. Yes, yes, the insemination down there. At that age, or you have to wait for more months? No, most of them we want to inseminate at uh, 14 months. At 14 months, so that uh, 22, 23 months, we want uh, to have that calf down. As you saw, or as you may see in some of the nini, you can see we are milking cows for 2019, which came almost the end of 2019, and we are, we are now milking them. So, we normally try to push that within 14 months, it is in calf. Yeah. Let's have a walk through, yeah. see what uh, doctor is doing with the, the 8 to 14 months uh, calves, uh, whether they are well reared. Uh, whether he is able to, to achieve the right weight at yeah. 14 months to inseminate. Yeah. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Thank you. Yeah. As you can see, this is our middle impera. From there, we have uh, this one we call it Ban 1. Uh, Ban 1 is uh, the one that has got cows that are second middle cows and middle cows, they are all here. So as we go down, we will go to first middle cars, then we go to way first. So all these are second calving and third calving? Yeah, second and third calvings. The oldest cow here is that one, uh, we call Anjubiri. That is uh, a third cover. Uh, there is another one, the one I'm seeing is a difficult breeder. We are maintainer. That is a 2014 cow. Yeah. Jubini is named after the Jubini government. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope the performance is good. Uh, yes, the performance is good. The performance is good. She does that seven, that eight. That is seven liters, that eight in a day. Yeah, in a day. Hey, doctor, you are talking <laughs> chess. <laughs> yeah, Juviri is, all, Juviri is okay. <laughs> you can see, that time, oh, I, oh. that time I was very excited. And I even named one Lecho, the other one Margaret, <laughs> and Juviri. <laughs> <laughs> How comes you don't have uh, uh, aged cows in this farm? Having seen the oldest is uh, 2014, the other one is now in 2016. If I give you a little history of this farm, I started this farm with car cows because I couldn't afford the uh, young cows. So, and my interest from those cows was not what they were producing or the way they were. My interest was to get calves out of them and then grow my own, my own hand. So, I have an objective that I keep on shifting every year. Generation after generation after generation. Like now we are at 25 liters. Any cow producing less than 25 years, less than 25 liters, has to leave. What, what what do you mean by 25 liters? Is it the peak production, the average uh, production per lactation? We take the average for the first three months. That is what determines whether now she should leave or she should stay. But we we have calculated the average lactation for the full lactation of last year. If she went up to maybe two eight and days, we will calculate the two eight and days and get the average. Then we come and match it against the first three months. If these first three months it's not higher than the average for last year, the whole the whole the whole the whole, the whole time, then that cow has to leave. Because now we want to make sure that in like uh, the next three years, the least cow producing here is that five without being pushed. If we push them, even these ones, if we know we push them, they can go even to 40s. But here we don't push cows. Uh, we'll have a discussion with you what you mean by pushing cows. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's one of our viewers think it's uh, you place a cow here <laughs> and you keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. No, 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 no. I'm saying pushing. Maybe we have that in discussion. But here we don't push cows. Uh, this is now where you have your first covers. Yeah, these are first covers. As you can see, most of them are 19, 19, 19. 
that tells you they were born in 2019. Like no, maybe ones. you can tell us something about uh, your form of identification. I find it a bit uh, unique. It's printed. Yeah. <laughs> and then others have seen that 2014 it's still intact. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us something about this, uh, this form of uh, identification. And where we can get these ear tags from. Yeah. This form of identification, we have the cow name. Uh, on the For example, tag, here we have a... This is Queen. That's Queen. This is Queen. As you can see, Queen is 1930. 1930 means that she was, the she was born in 2019, being the 30th birth in the farm. So that is how we name them. Then from there, we will put the sire so that you are easily able to identify it on front you can so see that it, one is this is mad max below there you can see it's mad max this is tabasco akinyi yeah so you can see akinyi 1933 the father is the size is tabasco so you can easily identify them uh, at the back i can see dam and some uh, history yeah, at, there. at the back we put the dam we put the date of birth and then uh, also we put the sire. but mostly at the back we put the dam and the date of birth. I can see your cows are coming on heat uh, very well. Yeah, that's why well I told you. Well heat. That's why I told you the ones that uh, come in between November and December, within 19 days we start serving them. So, this one, uh, the cows that you saw there, up there, one of them belongs to this one. Now, uh, where, do you, where do you get these ear tags from? Uh, these ear tags, uh, there's a guy called Juma. Juma, Juma, Juma is in Eondolet. He is with the Kenya, I think Kenya Standbook. Kenya Standbook, yes. Yes, I print the names, I send it, I, I put the names, everything. I send them to him. Then he is able to print the tags and then we bring and then we fix. So yeah. I like your form of identification. Yeah. So direct captures all the farm details. Yes, yes. We will know the year birth, the birth number, so that now we are able to, to plan them. Like now you can see the way I was saying group, grouping. You can see that is 1934, 1932. That one must be 1930 something. So they are closer. The size, the everything, they will be closer. Now here we have, uh, like I can see 1932. Yeah. These are in calf heifers. Yeah, these are in calf. The 19. Yeah, 1937. 20, 30, 2037. 2037 she is served. That is a 2020 calf. That's a 2020 calf. COVID babies. Yeah, <laughs> she is served. <laughs> Now this one, 2040s, these ones are not served because uh, as you can see, the weight of this one and that one, it, she is not yet the weight we want. But, you... uh, but of course, what affected as we ran out of syringe, we ran out of hay, for the last three months, we have struggled, my friend. You will give us yeah. that story. <laughs> <laughs> Bacteria has struggled. Yeah, <laughs> the last three months, we did the wrong calculation. Yeah. yeah. And now those ones are the ones that are slightly over eight months. Yes, yes. When now, they come up from up there, they come here. This is why you can see 2146. But there's something I want to see. Eh? You know, we can talk of good, good things, but also there are challenges that come in the farm. Like now, there are, there are cows I would want you to see here. Eh? Where is uh, Ruth? If you see Ruth and the Ivy, can you see Ruth and Ivy? I can see ah, the favor. This is the uh, Ivy. Is Ivy. Here is Ivy. Yeah? You see Ivy, look at that one is 2038 Ivy. Look at 2146. And uh, this one is 2042. 2042. Now, when you look at the size of that, uh, that Ifa, Versus this one, 2146. Don't you see they're almost the same size? They're the same size. They're the same size. So, this is why I was saying, if you mismanage calves up there, these calves were managed, those two, Ivy and Ruth, they were mismanaged. That is why you can see 2038, she looks small, but 21, I want to change management. So, when you mismanage manage a calf the first three months, these are the consequences you face. And it's yeah. very expensive to correct. <laughs> very expensive because this one I cannot sell. I wouldn't want to sell to somebody something that is of this nature. I'm keeping it at my own cost. I'm keeping it at my own cost. So if you want to succeed, first of all, make sure the first three months you're on top of it. If they come from there, the first three months, uh, if you can gain uh, your 90 kilos plus uh, the body weight, you are home, home and dry. Yeah? So here, 
exam, good exam. Actually, I, I like showing uh, any visitor Ivy and Ruth so that they see if you mismanage, you can get the results of that. Now, in this uh, form of identification, eh, yeah. I can see 2140. I've seen some 2146. Yeah, 2146 is here. Do you also include the bulls in that code? No, the bull is at the back. No, no, not the bull. Yeah. In case you get a bull calf. No, the bull, we don't include the bull. We don't so include the bull. So the 46 is the number of uh, heifers. Yeah. So, so the calving might be more than 46. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But we rarely get a bull. Like uh, as you saw in the calf pen, this year we have gotten one bull from 60 semen because we use sexy semen all through. So it's very rare to get a bull. But we get them. We get them. There is a year I got three. I was almost From sex to semen. From sex to semen. And you're the one who is selling semen to I'm us. The one who is selling. And but, we got a bull. And I got three of them. And some of uh, <laughs> some of the farmers uh, will almost uh, kill the inseminator. No, 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 no. Sex semen and I have gotten a bull. This they, is not They need to understand it's ninety five percent sex. So the five uh, the five percent can fall on you. And uh, ili kwangukia three times. Three times in a year. That is the year I got the highest number <laughs> of bulls. But from there, I've gotten one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you have seen the walkthrough of Dr. Karia? I wish to pose a question to you. How comfortable would you be to take us through your dairy farm? Would it your caution is too dirty? Would it that you have a poor growth rate in your heifers like Ivy and Ruth? Would it that your production is too little to show even your own self? You try to convince yourself that you are doing very well, knowing well that you are doing very badly. If you are so much confident to take us through your dairy farm, then know you are doing something positive, something good, or you are willing to learn. At Dairy Networks, we offer the dairy consultancy services uh, either you come to our office or in your own dairy farm. If you would wish to seek these services, just call the number uh, the number running through there or you send us an email and we'll be able to assist you. See you in the next uh, video where we highlight the journey of, the doc of Dr. Karia and how he has been able to achieve 46 calvings since he started this dairy farm in 2014. Thank you. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment there. Bye-bye.